After last season's a disappointing season with South Vigo, can we go one further or a few more further and trying to get into the UEFA European Conference League or Europa League or even Champions League in season two? I doubt it. We've got to have a lot of money to be spent to get to that area, but who knows, we can maybe do it. Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Olsen and Summer Hex. Welcome back to another episode of the High Five Journeyman, where we're on our profile of Donato Ronchi, who you might notice has a little wanted symbol by him. That is because, somehow, after... I, I don't know if I was even in close to getting this art, but given how we were near relegation and round about 17th, 8th, 17th, 16th, at one point in the season until we changed tactic. I would say we were close to getting the sack. But somehow Marseille have come to us and said they have been identified as a top candidate. Now Marseille, getting straight into things, but yeah, Marseille um, ended up, I think, finishing second. Yeah, they finished second, so they've got Champions League football for next season. They're actually the second best team in the league, but then of course we've got the massive monster of money bags that is PSJ. So it's going to be tough to knock them off their perch, but maybe we try it? I don't know, I'm going to attend the interview, I'm not going to show you any of it because it's all boring to show, but hopefully we can get the job, move to France and do good in cups including Champions League and really show ourselves that we are a good manager and not just someone who is lucky to be in the job like I reckon we are with South of Ego. So yeah the Marseille interview was unsuccessful but then Atlanta have offered us a job interview which we will be doing. They also said we are one of the top candidates. If we can get that we'll be in I think Europa League football. Um, yeah, Europa League football last season. Um, Atalanta finished 7th. In actual fact, they were quite far off um, Napoli, who were far off people like Lazio, Milan, Juventus and Inter. So there's some catching up to do. It's not as far, I would say, as Marseille. I'm going to attend the interview, see what happens. Hopefully we can get it. I think because I said hopefully we can get it, we're obviously destined to not get it. Atlanta, Atlanta interview unsuccessful. So yeah, we didn't end up leaving to either Marseille or Atlanta. I didn't apply for any jobs or anything. I want to stick out with South Vigo for maybe three or four seasons. See if we can get European football. Maybe have a go at European football in the Conference League or the Europa League. And just see what comes to that and then try and move on after that. But it's the 8th of September. Transfer window has ended. And we've got some deals to go over. So first off, we signed two players on the first of the seventh when the transfer window opened. These two were done even before the transfer window even opened. So Paul Bernardoni comes in as our second choice backup goalkeeper um, because our main choice guy who was like 37 or our backup who was 37 had retired. I forgot his name. I'm like I, I'm sorry that I forgot his name, but yeah, he retired at the end of the season. So, basically got Bernardoni from Yverdon in Switzerland on a free transfer. I don't think he's that bad. A bit high wages, I would say. I would like about eight thousand, but I think he's a decent goalkeeper and he can do a decent job as backup. And we also bought in Alvin Sanchez, uh, where most of our money went into. Eleven and a half million from Lausanne uh, to Lausanne, I mean, uh, where he had a decent season last year in Super League, and he's joined us and played four games and done awfully. But he's 21 years old; he could get so much more better, and that's why I went for the cheapest option. It was Yuks at AMC, and that was Sanchez, and so yeah, he's been signed. Other things to happen is Kevin who was saying he wanted to leave to start a new challenge he was sold to Marseille at the point where we were attending the interview so if he'd had gone and then we'd have joined him that would have been weird um because I don't think he's a good sign at all for Marseille because he was hardly playing for us 
I think Marseille are a much better team than ours. We got Alvarez will also learn that Alcoran again. And then coming into the new season, we actually sold a few more players. Jailson, who we were trying to sell all last season, he was eventually sold to Las Palmas. We also sold uh, Sergio Carrera. Um, his contract was running down at the end of the season. I, I thought, may as well sell him instead of letting him go on a free transfer. So that's what we did. We got 2.8 million for him from Everton. I think we could have got more, but in the end, I just asked. No one wanted him for what I was asking, so I just said, hey, um, to the agent, can you try and get someone to buy him? And they said 2.8 million from Everton, and we're like, okay. Um, Manny Sanchez, who, again, I didn't really want to sell, but Borussia Mönchengladbach came in with 3.5 million, rising 4.4. And I noticed his wages was like, I think high, or it was him or Crary who had the high wages. And so, and so I thought, okay, they'll just sell him. Also sold Franco Trevi, who hardly played last season. He's gone to Sporting Braga. And with all that money that came in, we signed a few more players. So Cass Odenthal comes in as our main choice defender. Um, 23 years old Dutch player comes in from Sassuolo. Well, I think he had a decent season last year, uh, and so yeah, we've signed him um, for £5.5 million. I don't think that's a bad deal, one bit, and if we somehow get a profit of double that, I'll be really happy. So yeah, he's a good player to sign. Uh, Ola Solbakken is our main choice striker now. I said at the end of the last episode that we might need a new striker because of all the shots we're having and hardly any goals. Um, well, no team goals, and the guy who was leaving, uh, and the guy who was our top goal scorer by like 20 more than the other, ended up being a loanee who went back, couldn't afford him because he wanted about 40 million. So instead, we've signed Ola Sobakin, who I don't know why it says he's only been available since 23 24. I don't know if that means he was an Ajax player because sometimes the Ajax staff are messed up. I don't, I don't know why he's a 26-year-old player who's got Norwegian caps who only started last season for a very much. I mean, going out on loan to Empoli then being signed by us all in the space of two seasons for 3.5 million. But he's played two games, not done good at all. Morgan Sanson comes in as a important player centre midfielder. He did say his accountability was better. And at 2.5 million at our scene, his current ability was 3.5 star from Nice. I thought, I'm going to buy that and pay it. So we paid it. He's joined those. Hopefully he'll be good. Uh, another player that's joined us. This was direct football. I thought, okay, I'll let him do it. Because uh, we had slots available in the team. And £6.5,000. It's not bad. It doesn't count too much of our wage budget. So yeah, we signed uh, Marvin Sanea, um, Togo French player, uh, coming in, comes in from Strasbourg in League 1, um, 1.4 million. Don't think we're gonna get a profit from him to be fair, especially if he doesn't play. But if he does somehow play quite a lot, get to that three star potential. Hopefully, his inflation on his market value will rise, and then. Could be selling within a year or two. But yeah, it's not started off too well. So we beat Real Betis in the first game of the season. Uh, Valencia and Girona we then drew, and Real Madrid we lost. So expected loss against Real. Real, Real I'm saying it wrong. Expected loss against Real Madrid. Draw against Valencia and uh, Girona. I would like to have won one of them, but then we also beat Real Betis. So. It's not as bad as I could make out. We had a tough start to the season. Uh, I didn't show you even the tactics I even used last year. Uh, towards the end of the second half of last season. Um, it's mostly this one. It's a custom vertical tiki attacker advance forward on attack. Two inside forwards on attack. And an advanced playmaker on support. Two central midfielders on support in midfield. Uh, then a wing back on support on left and right two ball playing defenders uh, so we keep on support but yeah uh, currently we are in 12th one win two draws one loss minus one goal difference five points it's not bad 
it's not bad. I I, I kind of mean my like it was bad, but I don't think it's that bad given the toughness of the teams. Good to my head now, probably to January. See what happens. If anything needs to be swapped, we'll obviously swap the tarot for it. But hopefully we can get continental football. Well, we might actually be doing better than continental football. <laughs> We're fourth. Yeah. All that worry about uh, starting off poorly is out the window because we're fourth. We're only a point behind third place, Atletico. We're miles off Barcelona Real Madrid's points totally, but then that's to be expected because they're Barcelona Real Madrid, aren't they? And we're drawing on the same points as Valencia, but got a hell of a better goal difference. And we're only a point in front of sixth place, Real Valladolid. But crucially, we're four points ahead of seventh place Sevilla. So it's brilliant. Um, yeah, not bad at all. I forgot to show you, but our season preview is still expected to be 10th, like it was at the start of last season, at the start of the game. But fourth place now, if we even drop down to seventh, I think because it's Barcelona and Real Madrid in Spain, they might win the Copa del Rey, so that might open up a UEFA uh, European Conference League slot. So, hopefully, if we get seventh, we get Conference League football. Otherwise, are they for sixth? But yeah, it's going quite well. Yeah, why did I say anything? From fourth place at the end of December to 14th place and in a worse position than you were last season by the end of the season yeah uh, we we'll dropped what from fourth we have 31 points at December so we've only gained 11 points in the second half of the season oh my god loss 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 we did really well in the Copa del Rey getting to the quarter final before losing to Real Sociedad or getting thrashed by the match, I should say. Um, in terms of the entire second half of the season, we lost every single game apart from winning against Girona, winning against Sevilla, and winning against Las Palmas, and a draw against Granada. Yeah, if it weren't for that start of the season, we would have been relegated. Uh, this tactic, I think has to be changed, and so we are changing it to this one. Uh, this tactic, um, just couldn't see out of the season. So yeah, we're moving into this tactic for next season. We'll just see how it goes in friendlies. If we don't go do go in friendlies, I might drop a centre midfielder down to defensive midfielder. In terms of anything that happened halfway during the season, it looks like we're no doubt some players like Hugo Sotelo, um, who was two and a half star. We also loaned out Tassos Duvacas, who hardly played for us in the first season, hardly played for us in the second season. And is now on loan at Genoa, where he's only scored two goals in 11 games. For us, he's not scored any goals. So, yeah, he'll be one to be looked to be sold next season. But I'm just so disappointed that we can't continue the push and get continental football. I said 7th place will be brilliant. What about 14th place? Oh, yeah, that's not good enough. It looks like we had a few injuries, though. So, maybe the injuries were the cause of this downward spiral. Uh, we were nowhere near in any of the player stats in terms of team stats. We were seventh on goals, so we got better on the goals, which is good. Uh, we got good on shots. Get no, we did badly on shots against. I know we did good on shots against because it means the highest, the first, whoever's first had the most shots against. So we did well defensively. Average possession, we did well. Clean sheets, we did well as well. So it's not bad. Uh, shots forward as well as well again. So we got a lot of good shots in, and for some reason we were scoring these goals as well. So that's good. But it just all went downhill. Three nils, two nils, two nils, three one, three one, two one, two one, two nil, four one. Yeah, not good at all. If we go to the dynamics, I notice that some people are unhappy. Um, Fran Beltran is unhappy because. Uh, he ha is concerned about the club slide down the table. I am as well, my friend. Uh, hopefully he can get over it by the end of the season and start next season. Otherwise, 
we're going to struggle with Manager support. And Carl Starfelt, who's one of our better players in Central of the Bark, he is also happy because he thinks we're underachieving in the league. I'd say we are as well, considering where we started. Uh, hopefully, we can fix his unhappiness as well. Um, Tadio Lendi wants to leave. After lot of oh yeah, I transferred this to him, so hopefully, he'll be going at the end of next season. He has played a few times, not done too badly, but we've got better players in his position, so yeah. Um, but look at the stats. Um, Starfart played the most games with 43 games. Um, Mingueza got 41, Bamba got 41, Perez got 41 or 39 starts. A load of others got quite a lot and a few with hardly any. Most goals, not as many goals as last time. Apparently it was Jorgen Strand Larsen scored, so where was the new guy? Ola Solbaka hardly played. And then they got five goals. I should have uh, kept him in the start lineup. I should have like made it guaranteed that he'd play. I might have to do that halfway through the start of next season just to see who's better player. But yeah, 18 goals for Duran Larson. Perez got 10. Sanchez didn't do too badly. Got over seven and a few assists as well. Most assistants was Morgan Sanson, so he didn't do too badly in the new signing uh, this season from Nice. Um, no, his other drones weren't the best, I would say. Um, Bamba got nine, Baltry got seven, Perez got seven. Most clean sheets, we've got more clean sheets this time with 11. One from Bernardoni. He must have played when there was an injury or in a cup match, I'm not sure. And Ivan Villar got 10 uh, clean sheets, that's better than last season where he only got like 6 uh, I would rank overall so tell him I'm not going to guarantee put into contention because he was on loan last season or this season I should say and Marvin Sinead didn't do too badly, so he only played 3 times off the bench, got over 7 but he's someone I'll hopefully try and sell get 1.4 million, it'll be a loss on the signing we signed him for, but I'm also just selling him because I don't think he'll go anywhere. We can get a younger player who could just do duty as a backup, and then if Minguez is sold or someone else leaves at left back, uh, we can get he can then take in account for that and become regular that way. So, yes, yeah, so they might be gone. So, back and got over seven, so he didn't do too badly average wise, but he hardly played. Regularly as a starter, and he only scored because of that. Alvin Sanchez was the best player by a mile. Coming in from Lausanne in the Swiss Super League, 11.5 million is expensive, and he's only worth 12.5 million now. We have got a release clause of 32 million, so if they match that, I'll be happy with it. But yeah, he didn't do too badly. The rest of the players, though, might have underperformed. Especially because we well, might have already performed at the start and then underperformed at the end. I don't know which is guarantee of what we are, whether we overperformed at the start or did what we were supposed to do at the start and then underperformed at the end or if we did exactly what we expected to do at the end. I don't know. <sighs> this is disappointing. Disappointing, but hopefully we're going to be given quite a lot of money. We've been in. If that is the actual budget at the start of the next season, which it is, so we've been given £7.8 million to spend next season. They're not backing us at all. Um, I'm going to have to sell a few players, I would think. Hopefully, get some maybe younger players that are cheaper on the wages and cheaper on the transfer fee. And then sell them for profit. I think that's what we're going to be doing now with South of Ego. Uh, maybe get a one or two players in that can be first team ready straight away. Otherwise, it would just be youngsters. But we're going down on money. Uh, only one million pound in the bank. Last season was 14 million. This season we've gained one. Um, yeah, and we've also lost uh, youth facilities. So, yeah. 
not good, but hey, but yeah, um, that is the, the end of this episode, so uh, if you have enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe to the channel as well for more FM24 content, we haven't got long now from now and uh, then of FM24 till the start of FM25 where you can I expect this first save to come out would be a Derby County one. If Derby County ladies are in the, in the game, uh, base game at least, uh, I might start with them um, as the opening save. and As well as starting with Chelsea because of the whole tactical masterclass like we did last season with Arsenal. Um, but yeah, um, if you're excited by any of that, ideas playing with the women's game, start off of the save of the game. So if, yeah, so, so yeah, if you're interested in any of that, sign off with a women's team at the start of FM25, then subscribe to the channel. And yeah, check out all socials down in the description below, such as Twitch, Twitter, uh, or X, whatever you call it now. I also have a Discord, we can come join that. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Hex Sangal. Bye everybody.